Right, good evening everyone uh, and thanks for joining us tonight for uh, one of the last FAS um, funded meetings of the year. We're getting towards the end of the year. Uh, so there's we're just in the last run of events uh, before the Christmas holidays. Uh, tonight uh, our focus is looking on um, agricultural machinery and what so the rules and regulations are uh, for you know, using machinery specifically on the road um, and what you can do to, to keep yourself legal. Um, we have got two industry experts, you've maybe heard them bantering away here while we, you've been, we've been waiting to start. They have, between them, they've got a fair bit of knowledge, I think, on the area. Um, uh, we're going to hear first from Jamie Smart, who is the Agricultural Vehicle Transport Advisor for NFUS. Uh, and we're also joined by Jim Coben, who is an ex-traffic cop um, and now is a traffic examiner with the DVSA. Um, so uh, I'm, we'll, I'll just shortly hand over to these two gentlemen and they will, will go through uh, some of the sort of common things that you should know uh, when you're using, you know, when you're thinking about taking machinery out in the road um, and, and what, sort of, what sort of things you could, what are the sort of common things that maybe people get caught up with. Uh, and what you can try and do to, to avoid avoid any problems and keep your, as much as anything else, keep yourself and other road users safe. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, everybody is on. Uh, so I, we're going to we'll start now. We'll be finished by nine o'clock. Uh, Jim, Jamie's going to go first and then Jim afterwards. They'll speak for approximately half an hour and then we'll have a bit of a question and answer session at the end. Uh, if you want to ask a question, then just uh, type it in the chat box uh, or the Q and A box, and which should be at the top of your screen. Uh, and then, and I'll I can field the questions for for both gentlemen later on. Um, okay, so I'll just I'll just stop sharing my screen, uh, and then if I can, how do I do that? Uh, and then. Oh, I want to stop sharing. Do you want me just to start sharing? Maybe you start sharing, uh, Jamie, and then it'll kick mine yeah. off. Oh, no, there I go. I found the button. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> right, so if you share your screen, and then we should be able to see. Okay, okay. There, have you got that one? Yep. Yep, I see that. Brilliant. Thanks very much for that, Alison. Um, yeah, I will kick off. It will be a really quick run through this. Um, I think it's always more important as these things. I'll give, you know, Jim and I will probably give you the basics. Um, but it's up to you folk to ask the questions because you know what you need to know. Um, as Alison said, I'm Jamie Smart. Um, I'm the... Agricultural Vehicle Transport Advisor for NFU Scotland. Been doing that for, I think it's about eight years now, but um, have been following the, the subject for an awful lot more years than that. I'm not going to tell you when I passed my, my driving test. It was, uh, yeah, more than a fortnight ago. So anyway, there's some, and it is just some of the legislation that um, covers what we're going to be talking about tonight and there's an awful lot more in the background that's just the headlines um there's an awful lot in there and i'm going to pinch jim's line um you know please we don't make the rules we only tell you about them um because a lot of them i still think are fairly nonsensical and in a lot of cases need some clarification but anyway, one of the biggest issues is that when the legislation was written, that was a big tractor. And exactly the same legislation covers that. So you can see where there's uh, yeah, room for an awful lot of problems with the legislation. But anyway, we'll start off with speed limits. Um, for most tractors, the speed limit is 25 miles per hour. Okay. 
The maximum speed for an agricultural vehicle is actually 40 miles per hour, but to go over 25 legally on the road, you've got to have dual line braking system, and that is normally indicated because you will only have one brake pedal. You wouldn't be allowed to have, um, you know, split brake pedals on that. It's also got to have the higher brake efficiency and ABS. It's got to be less or 2.55 metres wide or less. And it's got to have full suspension to all wheels. And that does not include cab suspension for the back wheels. It's got to be every wheel is suspended in its own right. You've got to have higher rate tyres. And if you're pulling a trailer, it's got to be to much higher standards as well, including a fail-safe braking system, ABS, and suspension. Okay. As far as I know, currently the only tractors being sold which would comply with that would be the JCB Fast Track or the Mercedes Unimog. And mounting an implement on that tractor may lower the speed limit you could have a tractor which is capable of, uh, you know, doing the, the 40 miles per hour. If you put a trailer which isn't up to the standard, you're straight back to 25. Okay. So then there's the widths. Um, up to three metres, there's, you're, you're basically, you know, um, 25 miles per hour. Obviously, you've gone over the 2.55, so you can't go 40. But until you get to 3, you're at 25. When you get over 3 metres, you've got to have do a police notification or achieve a dispensation notice from Police Scotland. Um, best way to get that is to go on to the Police Scotland website, just type in a search for agricultural dispensation and it'll take you to the page. We are actually currently working with them. They've been changing it around a wee bit over the last few months. Um, and I'm due to have a meeting with them shortly to try and get things um, sorted out. There were one or two wee hiccups, but um, it's a really, really simple process. Um, it's free of charge and it lasts 12 months, so what's not to like? So projections to either side marked, preferably with proper boards, but if that's impractical, uh, you know, you can use tape or, or something like that. And I always say if you are stuck or, or if you are caught out, don't just risk it and try and get home. Um, tie a fluorescent jacket or a fluorescent bib on make it obvious where the edges of the the load are. Lights required at night and then reduced visibility. And your speed limit is dropped to 20 miles per hour. Okay. If you go over three and a half meters, all of the above, but you've also to have an escort vehicle with you. Um, my advice for an escort vehicle, um, try not to use a tractor, try and use the, the, the pickup or the, or the Land Rover um, with a good set of beacons as a minimum. You can also get stick on signs saying that it's an escort vehicle, things like that. The more you do to make yourself um, visible to other road users, the better it is. Okay. Um, the person driving that escort vehicle has got to have some form of training in what they're doing. They've got to be made aware of any dangers and they've got to be in voice contact with the escorted vehicle at all times. What I would say there is do not use a mobile phone, even if it's hands-free. Um, and the reason for that is it's a bit awkward to have voice contact if there's no phone signal. You're better, um, you can use two-way radios and you can actually use those so long as you're in full control of the vehicle, you can use those when you're driving. Another one there is that your speed limit is now reduced 
to 12 miles per hour. If you go over 4.3 metres, then you have to get permission from the, well, I think it's still in, in the legislation of the Secretary of State, but, you know, um, I think if you're up over, over 4.3 metres, in my opinion, you shouldn't really be moving it on the road anyway. Okay. So, front and rear overhangs. Again, projections made visible from the end and side. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. Um, I always say to folk, you know, most manufacturers paint their weight blocks grey or green or whatever. Um, what what colours the road and what colours the verges? Grey and green. What's the first bit of the tractor to appear from behind the hedge? Your block. Paint the thing orange, you know, make it a nice bright colour, see how that does that, you know, just make it visible again. Um, and it, even better, make it day glow. Tin of, the aerosol tin of paint isn't dear, it might look a bit funny. Um, the other thing is, um, get some of the um, retro reflective marker tape, it's brilliant stuff. Um, if you've been out at night and shone the torch along to a road, you know, you see the signs all shining back at you. That's the retro reflective stuff on it. It's, it's really good stuff. Sharp projections must be guarded or removed. And that's really, really important. Um, number of times that you see uh, pretty dodgy um, implements on, on, vehicles and I just think, you know, what happens if a if a motorcyclist hits that? Um, you know, it's just going to be a mess. Or God forbid you catch somebody walking along the road. So sharp projections, take them off or make up a guard to get it covered. Again, lights are required at night and in reduced visibility. If you go over Two metres up to three, you need to put an end marker board on. That's the the triangle with with uh, white and red stripes normally, although you could, do get different ones. Um, but you know, again, it's making it making the the thing visible. If you go over three metres, you need to add side marker boards. Over four metres you need to notify the police or get a dispensation. And if you're over six metres, you need an escort vehicle and you need additional side markers. They're not dear things to buy. Um, you know, just make it, make it visible. And there's a classic example of, of a rear overhang. That's a, well, that's a five furrow plough uh, that will be close on five and a half metres overhang. And you can see, if you think in it, we've all, got, we've all done it, bottled in at the end of the, the field or, or gone into the, um, the gateway. Where does that plough go when you turn? It swings out across, doesn't it? So that's why you need the side marker boards. It's to make it visible. And as I say, for that plough, um, you would need a, a police notification or a dispensation. A lot of people say, oh, I don't have any wide um, vehicles or any wide implements. A lot of people, even a four-furrow plough, you would need to have that dispensation. Okay. Weights. The maximum weight for an agricultural motor vehicle is 31 tonnes. Okay, that's your tractor, your trailer and your load. So it's an absolute maximum of 31 tonnes. That changed a few years ago. Um, it went up from, what was it, 24,390 to 31, which, uh, yeah, we were really chuffed at that. We got the weight limits lifted. Everybody was happy. There was only one slight problem. 
they didn't change the maximum laden weight of the trailer, and that is still 18,290. Okay, so you have to be very, very careful. I know that uh, Stuart Trailer's most popular uh, trailer is a tandem axle 16 tonner. The trailer empty will be about five tons. It carries 16 quite legally, as you know, it's, 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 it's uh, rated to carry 16 tons. But I'm not very good at arithmetic, but I think that 16 tons plus 5 tons is a bit more than 18,290. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one that you have to be really, really careful of. Um, and some of them, yeah, you, you really do. And, I, I, you know, we've been trying for years to get this one changed because in my opinion, and this is my personal opinion, a modern trailer is perfectly capable of carrying more than that. The braking systems, they're normally full uh, commercial braking systems in, in these trailers now. They're perfectly capable of doing it, but the legislation hasn't caught up with it. Um, but those are the rules as they stand. Now, I think the next bit will be passing over to Jim, if he waits up there. <laughs> Yeah, the favourite bit, driving licences. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, Jim Cobbin, uh, traffic examiner for the DVSA, former uh, police officer, 15-year service in the traffic, now known as the road policing unit. So a lot of experience in road safety, big interest in it. Um, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing for a wee while longer. Much to Jamie's disgust, I'm retiring next August. Um, and... He'll be on his own. He'll know anybody to phone. What about this, Jim? What about that? Driving licences. They're currently in the news, big news at the moment. Um, the government have put forward various suggestions to alleviate the HGV driver shortage. And one of the steps they put in place on the 20th of September was no longer carrying out B plus C tests. It was all meant to be signed, sealed, delivered by the 15th of November, but something got in its way as far as B plus C goes. So just be aware of it and we'll cover it as we go through. So at the moment, 16-year-olds can drive. Jimmy? He's going deaf on me. It's Next frozen bit. for some reason. Yeah, right. Ah, there, there we it go. Goes. Yeah. A 16 year old can drive an agricultural tractor mounted on wheels up to 2.45 metres wide, drawing a two wheeled or close coupled four wheeled trailer. Close coupled is no more than 800 millimetres between the centres of the two axles. And he can draw that or drive that up to 31 tonne. Um, he cannot drive it on the road well plates, except when he's going to, during or returning from their test, if they fail. A wee proviso in there is if it's got a buddy seat going to or coming back from the test, if they fail, they need somebody sitting in that seat that's had the appropriate license for three years, at least three years. So just be aware of that one. 17-year-olds uh, can drive your agricultural tractor after they've passed their test um, in their Ford or Ford Fiesta Vauxhall Corsa. Um, they get category F as a uh, given. And again, no, sep no requirement for a separate trailer test to tow the trailer in the back of the tractor and the weight limit up to 31 tonne. And as you can imagine, that has raised a lot of uh, concerns. There was a rant, must be well over a year ago now, um, on Facebook. Um, obviously, a lorry driver upset at getting stuck behind a tractor, driven by what he called, referred to as a baby. And I had to, I had to get a medical every five years 
have to sit special tests, and yet here he is driving along the road um, with a load of tatties on. I bet you wouldn't be saying that if there was no chips on his plate at the end of the day. Um, the worrying thing about that was a lot of folk agreed with him, but the last comment I kind of took with trepidation because it said, yes, we are aware of that and are looking into it. Again, um, that's smacked to somebody uh, who writes the legislation but hasn't got a, a clue about the practicalities. Because if you can you imagine the difficulty it would place yourselves in if the person 17 years of age didn't get the trailer, the trailer part of the test for a tractor. He could drive it in the field, but he'd hate to stop and somebody else would take, take it from the field to the farm. So um, hopefully they'll not change it too much. Other agricultural vehicles, your combines or forklift require a Category B licence and are subject to age and weight restrictions. Now, oh, you've got them there. 17 is up to 3.5 tonnes. 18, you're a wee bit more sense to say, so you're allowed to drive 3.5 up to 7.5, and you have to be over 21 before you can go over 7.5 tonnes. So your combine with a header trailer on the board, out on the back of it, is a Category B, and at the moment it will be still required for a plus E, but it has to be 21 or over because the gross weight of that vehicle is over seven and a half tonnes. So just be aware of that one. The current situation with the B plus E, which, as I say, for the 15th of November was meant to be that anybody who had passed their test since January 1997 was going to get the Category E added to their licence as um, more or less a freebie. You wouldn't get it on your license right away, but when you when the person sent it away for change of address, change of photograph, or anything else, the category E would be added to it. However, um, police officers or myself at the side of the road doing a DVLA license check would see that they had given been given category E. However, for some reason or other, the legislation for that to be brought into being was not put in place in time to be uh, ratified by government to be effective from the 15th of November. So at the moment, you the advice is that they cannot drive a tr vehicle of category B plus E with, unless they are displaying L plates and have the appropriate passenger held their licence for at least three years sitting in the passenger seat. There are the usual exemptions, a trailer up to 750 kilograms, you can, they can tow that on the back of a vehicle, or if they tow a caravan, provided the, car, the maximum gross weight of the trailer does not exceed the unladen weight of the car, and the total combination does not exceed an authorised maximum mass of 3,500 kilograms. They can do that on their Category B. It does get complicated. Um, the, for some reason or other, we have stopped doing the driving tests, which could be leading to some hardship. Um, we had one guy in Perth who sat his test on the week that they said they could cancel the tests if they wanted. And he successfully passed his test and was very grateful because he was a businessman and he had sat his category B plus C so he could get work materials to his workers on site. And he was quite vocal with the examiner saying that if he'd failed, I don't know what I would have done because I might have had to pay off five workers and sell my business. So, yes, it's going to cause a great deal of difficulty until they get it sorted out. The latest update, they've said, it will be brought before government. They don't know when. That's the problem. Um, so it's just going to be a simple matter of watch this space. Um, hopefully, once it is uh, through the legislation, there will be plenty of coverage for it. They're now talking, apparently, to get folk to do accreditation courses, um, 
before they start driving towing trailers and that. Again, that's going to be additional cost, at least if you sat your course and got a, te a test at the end of it, there was something there. Um, they're talking apparently with the insurance industry as well, of whether they're wanting to, ex to put some form of accreditation in before they'll cover folk or that. So there's a whole heap of conversations being held round about it at the moment. Um, and I quite honestly can't see anything being done prior to the new year now, which again will put added stress on some businesses. And there's no doubt about that. Okay, Jamie. Category F license only covers the driver for agricultural or forestry tractors. A B category is required for combines, forage harvesters, ATV and telehandlers. So be aware of that distinction. Agricultural tractors category F, your combines and forage harvesters are agricultural vehicles, do not satisfy the definition to be included in the category F. So just be aware of that one. And the category H vehicle is the one that is track lane vehicles and it's only where they're steered by their tracks. That case one that he showed you at the start is pivoted. It's not steered by his tracks. It's uh, hydraulic rams that steer it. It falls into the category F despite its size. So it's the old uh, caterpillar D type they're speaking about where you pull the handles to get them to steer. They're the ones that the category H refers to. Next. Renewal, yeah, renewal of your licenses. Um, standard licenses expire at midnight the day before your 70th birthday. And the great uh, way of renewing them now is online. Apparently it saves money. So be aware of that one. Um, and it is a lot quicker, certainly just now, than doing it by post. Um, DVLA are in a, I don't know if I should say this, but I think I'm going to anyway, they're in a bit of disarray. Um, staff are still working for home. There legal, there's industrial action going on about social distancing, etc. It's a massive place. They employ a lot of folk in the kind of social distance, and there's all sorts of stuff going on in the background. Um, you can speak to them, or if you do speak to them, they hang up halfway through your call. Um, persevere is all I can suggest because you do eventually get an answer from them. If it's just a st straightforward renewal then do it online, and it's very, very straightforward. Trailer entitlement, I like his optimism there, will remain on your new licence. Um, please, please check your licence when you get it back for Swansea. Um, recently at Perth, well, say recently, the last set of road checks we did before we went into lockdown way back in March, or it was actually February 2020, six HGV drivers had lost their Category C or CE from their licence when they sent the licences away to Swansea for change of address or updating their photograph. And when they started the conversations with uh, Swansea about why they'd lost them, uh, they got the answer was that the, oh, the girl must have pressed the wrong button. So that's the kind of answers you get. So, and one of the drivers... Uh, he wasn't very polite to me when I told him he didn't have an HGV driving licence. Um, he called me all sorts of things, but my mum and dad were married when I was born. Um, and he told me that it wasn't his responsibility to check his licence. I believe he tried the same defence at court, £200 and six penalty points later, he found it was his responsibility. So just a wee look at it when you get it back to make sure that everything's there that should be there. Um is very, very worthwhile and saves you a fair bit of money um, in court fines and added insurance costs. Jim, I'm going to butt in there just for a second. Piece of advice for everybody, before you do send any old licence away, usually you should try and keep your old licence till the new one comes back, in my opinion. But always take a photocopy of it just to show that you have had it because I've had people on the phone in the past where it's virtually impossible to get proof that they've had an entitlement when it has been removed. So just take a take a copy of it. Yeah. If you do it if you do it online, 
believe it or not, you don't send your old license away until you get the new one because that's when they tell you to send your old one back. Yeah. Because I re- I renewed mine in August and it really was um, very very straightforward. But yeah, um, the other way to do it is to just do a, the DL check online before you send it away and take a screen print of what you've got there um, or a photocopy, whichever you can do. It's handy. Certainly very, very, very worthwhile. Yep, renewal of your C1 and D1, which was included in your older licenses, now require additional applications in medical. Be aware of that one. If you do have a, treated yourself for your retirement to a, a motor home, um, the majority of them are now over three and a half ton. So you need the C1 and it doesn't automatically get renewed as it used to. Um, they're now looking for additional applications in medicals. And uh, there was quite an interesting debate today on the Jeremy Vine show on Radio 2 about what they should do with over 70 drivers. And it was getting quite heated at points. Um, there was one a lady over 70 year old says, yes, I think we should get checks um, to stop this kind of victimisation coming on. If we get a check to say we're compass mentis and have the faculties to drive, then we should be allowed to drive it. And it was very, very interesting, very, very difficult to judge. <clears throat> and yes, remember, vocational licences are every five years from 45, is it not, Jimmy? Well, you get the 45, uh, you get, uh, is it? Is it 45? Yeah, 45, I apologize. Yeah. Aye, that's all right. No, it's 45. Um yeah, it's every five years for 45 and then annual from 65 with the medicals and that. The, the relaxation for medicals is now come to an end. Um, we're back to the full Buna. And in fact, there'll be quite a lot of folk that got the annual, the yearly, the year's extension. They'll be starting to have to fork out for medicals and everything else now. Um, so just be aware there was some difficulty for certain doctors doing the HGV medicals and that, and that was how they got the year's extension without a medical. Um, so just be aware if it's coming up, start the process nice and early. The DVLA used to be quite good at sending out letters to you when the medical investigation was ongoing, but they are now um, very lax at it and not always sending letters out to say that you can continue to drive while your application is being considered. So just be aware of that one. Mobile phones. Uh, do not use a handheld mobile phone when you're driving. Um, even if you've got a hands-free, the system, try not to use it. And if you do keep the calls to a minimum, there was, I think it's now in again, the legislation um, that you're not allowed to use the mobile phone to play games, text, or video any uh, bad driving that you see on the road, it's now the same £200 and six penalty points on your licence if you do that. The police down in England have had a couple of instances where the uh, lorry driver been using handheld mobile phone. Um, one has in-cab footage of them um, scrolling through his playlist to find music and he looks up at the last second to realise oh dear there's traffic in front of me stationary um, and uh, catastrophic results four persons were killed as a result of his actions he's now doing uh, eight years uh, at Her Majesty's pleasure had he been paying attention he would have had 45 seconds to slow down and stop safely. Uh, it was a breakdown. Cars were held up behind the breakdown and uh, he, he caused a very, very nasty accident. So bear it in mind, we see it every day. You'll see it when you're out and about, no doubt. It gets frustrating. Um, they were just coming into being when I, before I retired from police away back in 2005 and it didn't matter how often you stopped and reported folk. We were reporting the same people time and time again for it. Um, just remember, if you do hold the vocational driving licence for C or a CE, the Traffic Commissioner can take action on your vocational section on your licence. 
if you do get caught for using a mobile phone. And at the moment, they are suspending that vocational entitlement for a month for using a phone. They are talking about putting up to three months to put some deterrent out there. So just be aware of it. Next. Jim, can I just ask before you move on, yeah. when you talk when you talk about a vocational license, is that like your HGV? Yes, yeah, your C C1, yeah. Any anything that they've had to set a test to get. Um the more yeah, over. yeah, the more mature gentlemen like myself and Jamie that have got this <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that, that have the C1 entitlement through grandfather rights, that cannot be affected. A, or the traffic commissioner can you take action on that but if you're of the younger generation and had to sit a test to get a C1 on your license or a CCE then the traffic commissioners can suspend that vocational entitlement uh, as I say for a period of a month uh, at the moment um, and uh, they are talking about putting up to three mud on the road covered by the Roads Scotland Act um, we see it, it's passed, we haven't been too bad this year, certainly up my neck of the woods, um, the tatty season was reasonably dry um, and we didn't have too many uh, instances of mud getting deposited on the road, however it is illegal and you need to take as much care as you can to prevent it getting onto the road, so try to dislodge as much as possible before you go onto the road it's not always easy certainly with the length of tractors and trailers now, um, and certainly the verges eh, don't lend itself to doing it. If possible, drive slowly. Yeah, we've all seen it behind the boy fit or opens the throttle out and um, it's getting splattered every place. Try to prevent that. And if you can, somebody gets a wonderful job of a road sweeper to keep the, the big deposits off the road as quickly as possible power brush if you've got one or employ a contractor to do it and again get the road signs out look at them um you see them at the hand the handwritten ones mud on road they're better than nothing but can you do get recognized signs um with the slippery road surface and that and yes be very very aware of your health and safety of staff when they're clearing the road the guy on the tractor with a power brush Yep. Um, Jamie alluded to it when he was speaking about escort vehicles. Um, when I was in the police doing escorts of normal loads in a patrol car with the back, the boot or the back of the estate tailgate, yellow and red pointing up to the blue lights, folks still just to be run into the back of you um, or just to be run into the back of an abnormal load uh, 16 feet wide and you know, so they, they don't pay attention. So you need to make it as safe as you can. Signs might not save you, but they will help in any uh, incident. Load security. I like how he's left it for me. <laughs> However, DVSA have made a template up and we ask ourselves five questions. Yep. Can, the load, can the load move forwards? Can it move backwards? Can it move sideways? Is the load held on by friction alone? And use the correct type of lashing for the load you're carrying, be it ropes, straps, chains and dwangs. That's what we've got to consider before, the, before we start taking action for an insecure load. We have had instances of a 16-tonne tracked digger held on to a low loader trailer by two five ton ratchet straps um, he didn't get very far out of that lay in fact he didn't get out of the lay by until the chains and dwangs were brought in but we have seen it, we see it all the time um, and it's moved up now we are now starting to take action with load security, certainly a lot better uh, than we have in the past and we are now looking at it and generally we're getting the message over um, and we do have one question uh, on the Q&A about box pushers on trailers for the tatty boxes they are a perfectly acceptable method of load securing provided 
the boxes are loaded empty and pushed up so there are no gaps between them. You can then load them to your heart's content on the field and you don't need any additional straps on them. Some farmers have put additional D-rings on the front and on the pusher bar. And once they've got the tatties in there, they put the ratchet strap on front to back as a safety, an additional safety feature. The other thing that you've got with box pushers is tell your driver not to switch his tractor off if he gets stopped by the polis, as has happened in the past. The police have asked him to switch off the tractor and when they walk around the back of the lorry, in the back of the trailer, because the spool valve's released, the box pusher isn't pushing the boxes for it anymore and they can end up getting done with insecure load. So just make your drivers aware of that to leave the tractor running and tell the police why they're leaving it running um, to make sure that the box pusher stays where it is. I don't think there's much more on that. We can say there has been tests done um, and the, that well-known trailer manufacturer did tilt a trailer with empty boxes. Was it 42 degrees he got to and he stopped because it was nearly counting the tractor? They then filled the tatty boxes with tatties, and I think they got it to 26 degrees before the first tatty fell out. So box pushers were provided they're used correctly. So empty boxes pushed together, no gaps, and everybody should be happy at that. Jim, I think the other one to say with that is that the load itself can be, be then secure bit. So yes, if sir. you have if you have tatty boxes as the example again, if you've got them heaped up and no cover over them, then the potatoes themselves yeah, become, become the insecure, insecure part. Load. Yeah, it's actually more prevalent with neeps. Yep. Um, they tend to pile them higher. Um, was it? Uh, it must be about three years ago, um, they were running the A90 um, back and forward along the A90. And one night I went home, um, they could have felt, they could have fed quite a big heap, uh, big field of sh sheep or coos with the amount of neeps that were lying bend the side of the road. Um, that one that popped up there, the trailer. Uh, yeah, there was one there, just the hydraulic bale yeah. trailers. The hydraulic bale trailer, yep. Um, the bale trailer with the hydraulic sides, they go up. Provided the stuff can't move to the side or at the back, it's perfectly acceptable. And I have seen some of them adverts for the new for the latest trailers and that the the self load and everything. Um, and they've got the hydraulic sides there. So yeah, um, that's the that is the 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 acceptable form of load security. That's the ones. Can it move forward, backwards, or sideways? And that's it. And if, they, if you can answer them, we know, then your load's secure. Okay. Okay. Right, Jim, I'll take this last wee bit, if you like, um, seeing as you've done the complicated bits. Oh, this is just as complicated, though. All oh, right, okay. Oh, no, of course, you're the legal expert on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. an awful cough of God. <laughs> yeah, Um yeah, we've seen it time and time again. Allow traffic to pass. When does too much, or when does the traffic behind you become too much and you should pull in? Well, it all depends on the roads you're on. Um, is there a lay-by um, to do it safely? Because the overriding factor here is you must be able to get the, tra the tractor, trailer, or implement clear of the road to allow the traffic to pass safely. Mr Smart recommends using or says you can use bus stops. That's all very well provided there's nobody standing in the bus stop. Um, mind you, the tra traffic would then get past if the bus was waiting to get out. But seriously, um, be very careful with using bus stops because, okay, if you know when the bus is coming or if there's still buses use the route, um, yeah, you could get away with using them. But 
be aware of the fact that they've got to, you've got to get clear of the road to allow it um, to pass safely. Some roads where they can't do that, so you just have to keep going. Um, and the police officers should be well aware of the road that they're on um, before they start challenging you to that. Um, we've seen it, I've seen it on the A9, um, Perth to Inverness Road, um, tractor coming down, he had a line of about 30 cars behind him and he passed an empty lay-by. That would be, to me, £100 and three penalty points for driving without due care and attention. Um, but if he'd been on a road where there was no lay-bys, then the cars would just have to wait behind him. Um, it gets frustrating for car drivers, I know, but they've got to be make sure they're safe, they're not causing any danger when they're doing the crazy overtakes. So just be aware of it. Um, and it does get frustrating for the car drivers, but if there's no place for you to pull in safely, then tough, they have to wait. Yeah, and Jim, the other thing is you have to be able to draw out again safely yourself. Yeah, aye. Um, that's you know, it. I've, I've, I've seen it where, you know, um, they've said, oh, you could have pulled in there, but, um, you know, there's just no way you can get out again. Safely. Yeah, yeah, so it's you're, you're you're a big well tractor, heavy machinery, you've not got lightning acceleration. So yeah, then you do it on a blind just after a blind bend or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, common sense. Lights, if they're fitted, must be in good working order. Um I've been quite impressed recently um with technology that actually works. Um the magnetic lights that work through Bluetooth stuck on the back of trailers, um, whether it be brakes, direction or whatever, they're absolutely brilliant. There's no mistake in the fact they're very, very bright. Um, but the lights have got to work if they're there. So just make sure that they are. We're now into the darker mornings and nights and uh, the nasty weather where lights have got to be there. Um, and I think, again, Jim, I'll jump in here. The other thing is, please, and it's one of my pet hates, is folk that use their ploughing lamps on the road. You know, you've tried to get that extra extra round in with the plough and you've been caught out by the dark and you think, all right, OK, I'll just nip home and I'll leave my uh, ploughing lamps on. Um, yeah, you can see your plough brilliantly, but the folk following you cannot see a thing. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, white light to the rear is an White offense. light to the rear yeah, is an yeah. absolute offence and just yeah. do not do it. It's quite funny you should mention that, Jamie, on whatever morning I went to Perth this week, there was a works truck, a, a works van going along. Um, he was some form of highway maintenance, but he had two white spotlights mounted above the rear doors and both of them were on. Um, yeah. At one point, I actually thought it was a lorry coming along the carriageway towards me. I was like, ooh, this is going to get interesting. But it was, it was him, um, just forgotten. Yeah, yep. so you be aware of that, yeah. Avoid rush hour if possible, um, not always possible. And when is rush hour? Because, well, <clears throat> certainly in Dundee, it now starts about seven o'clock in the morning, goes to about nine and half past three at night to about half past six. So, yeah, just do the best you can. Plus, plan your route and your work. Yeah, um, hopefully planning, you're not that far to go, but depending on your circumstances, it may be. Um, and hopefully if anything happens and you've not got too long a diversion, but just, just basically come down, common sense, um, and just have a look at it. Yeah, lights fitted, working and used appropriately. Yeah, your beacons should be seen uh, from 360 degrees. Again, I've not got too much bother with it. If you, you've got a load of bales on, you've got a flashing beacon on the trailer, but when you're alongside the trailer, you can't see the one on the tractor, but you've got the beacons that are working um, and that's it. You're doing the best that you can. Um, Brakes should be connected and maintained. Yes, if there's any part of the braking system on there, even be it the pulley wheel for the old hand 
ratchet style of brake, if it's there, then that brakes need to be in good working order. So if you're taking the brakes off, take everything off. Um, you shouldn't really, you need brakes nowadays, um, but some of the older trailers, well, the handbrake lever was seized on, it never seen grease for years. Um, so they just took it off and left the, the cables and that there. That is an offence, it's no brakes. But if there's nothing there, if it had been going at 20 or 25 mile an hour, you probably would have been all right. So just be aware of them, connected and maintain Windows mirrors should be kept clear. Yep, you need to see where you're going and your mirrors to see what's behind you. Blind spots caused by control boxes. Yep, and again, um, blind spots where you're... Um, and I'm going to bring it in, Jamie. I'm surprised you've not started already. Um, spikes up or down. The front loaders, arms up, arms down. Um, if they're up, you've got blind spots. If they're down, they're, uh, they become lethal weapons if the spikes are still there. Um, so just be careful of that ones. But yeah, watch for blind spots. Couplings must be latched free from excessive wear. Yeah, good must be maintained in a good and efficient working order in accordance with the recommendations of the manufacturers. Sharp projections must be covered or removed. Yep. Um, there's folk out there now making uh, covers for projections. Um, some folk are actually just using an old bit of cast iron road pipe with straps on it to tie over the, the points. It's better than nothing, not ideal. Um, if you can take them off, take them off and you can lower the arms down that the front plate becomes effectively a bumper. But please take them down far enough so that they do become a bumper. Um, we had a nasty accident in the Perth area a number of years ago now where they'd taken off the spikes, they were on the trailer and he'd lowered these arms. Um, so the plate, the mounting plate for the spikes was going to be his bumper. Unfortunately, it was just a wee bit high and they went up over the bonnet. I'll not elaborate any further. Um, maintenance, again, vehicles, trailers, implements must be maintained according to the manufacturer's instructions and it should be done by a competent person, preferably an engineer, but a competent person. They need to find what a competent person is, unfortunately. Um, so, yes, you've got to be happy that the person's doing it, knows what they're doing. And more importantly, keep records to show what has been done. Um, and just do it, get into the habit of doing it and keeping a record that you've checked the brakes, greased it or whatever. And daily walk around check. ACB drivers have to do it. Again, it's nothing wrong with your drivers your drivers doing it because at the side of the road if I'm with my colleagues the vehicle examiners and they're looking at issuing a prohibition for defective brakes they're going to hit the driver if he had checked it he could have discovered the brakes weren't working right before he came out the firm might save him a court case similarly with lights <coughs> checks the lights, they're all working when he leaves, at least you can truthfully say. And if he's got a record to show he's done that, then it leads a wee bit more credence to uh, the fact that he's done it. Um, we've had drivers at Perth swearing blind to us that they've done the walk-around checks on the pickup and trailer. And when we do the light check on the trailer, there's no brake lights, no tail lights, no indicators on the trailer. They swear blind that they've done the walk-around check, but when they take the lens covers off, there's no bulbs in the holders. So how could they have done a walk-around check and they were working? Um, so, yeah, so, you know, just get them into a habit of doing it. And if you've, got, if you've got a wee tick sheet to say they've done it, brilliant. Right, Jim, I think that's us at the end of the presentation. I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, lighten it off a wee bit and then hit folk again, I think. Um, get this wrong, and if you're lucky, you might have that in your rear view mirror. 
Or if, you're un- if you're unlucky. Just think about it, folks. Yeah. That, yeah, absolutely. luckily, there was nobody, they were parked cars. But you can just imagine if that had been that traffic jam or whatever, yeah. you can see what can happen. So, okay. I will Thank stop you very sharing. Much, gents. Right, that's grand. We will go back. Um, that was excellent. Thank you very much uh, for that, gents. There's been quite a few questions. Uh, so wait till I just... Uh, oh, everybody's disappeared. What have I done now? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so I think, Jim, you answered Robert's first question about the strapping on. So I, I don't think everybody else can see these questions. So there was a question just to... Recap for everybody else that's attending. There's a question um, about loading uh, and securing tatty boxes. So the boxes are on a trailer as a single layer with box pushers in the back. Um, we've heard stories of drivers being stopped in the road and being told to have a ratchet and strap around all of the boxes. Others have been told each box must be strapped. Some have also said that trailer edges must have a lip to prevent boxes from sliding. Uh, so I think you answered that question Jim, in your presentation, just that the box pusher itself is sufficient. Yep. The only yeah. thing there, though, is that if you don't have a box pusher and you are using straps, every box must be secured. Yeah. Just, yeah. just um, I've, I've seen quite a lot of people throw a strap over, you know, the back two boxes and maybe pull them forward a wee bit, but it's it's got to be every every one, every one of them strapped. Yeah. Okay, um, the next one was, um, is there any standards for point protection? I think we maybe covered this just more at the end there, but is there anything, any good practice that you've seen that you could share? Um, oh, no. the, 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 the gold plate standard is to remove any, any spikes before you go on the road. Um, it's... <laughs> Realistically, it, you, you can't do it quite a lot of the time. Um, what you've got to do is make best endeavour. I always say, you know, the I've, I've seen folk throwing a, a pallet over a set of spikes and saying, oh, that's it covered. Again, I'll say, what happens if, if, if a motorcyclist runs into that? The pallet's just going to destroy itself. So, you know, make yourself up. It, it, anybody that can use a welder, you could you could make yourself you know two bits of um, box section to go over the over the outside spikes and a bit of angle iron across the front, weld them together, and then either strap that on, otherwise it becomes an insecure load, or you you can make yourself up some thumb screws to 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 um, you know to to hold it on. It's it's a pain, but. Um, you know that you're looking at other people's safety. Um, when you're buying the machinery in the first place, can you get one with folding spikes? Um, that's what I did when when I bought my bale spikes. I've got folding ones that when I'm on the road, they all they all fold up out of the way. So you know, okay. yeah. there there was a fabricator up north someplace. He'd actually designed. Um, as you said, Jamie, just welded box section uh, steel together and made a framework and it just hung on and then was secured over the spikes. Um, yeah, um, that was the that was his way and he was actually doing quite well with it. But as I say, he's up north, so it would be... And what about um, spikes that maybe have a... Like the covers, you know, that go over them if they're moving spikes, you know, to make them bail squeezers at silage time. Would those covers count as protecting the spikes? You know, they've got a rounded end, but it's effectively still two prongs, isn't it? Is that the? Um, it's one of these ones. I, I hate this question, and we get asked it all the time. <laughs> it's all the time. Um, 
Uh, section 100 construction and use. Oh, using a vehicle in a dangerous condition. Yeah, that's that's the one that covers it. Now, it goes to about two paragraphs, but basically what it says is um, no part of your vehicle or, or its load will pose a danger to the road surface yeah. or other yeah. road users. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And it, it doesn't it doesn't go an awful lot further than that. And there's an awful lot of it as interpretation. But it's, yeah. I always look at it if if you have the motorcyclist, if you're you know a kind of wet harvest and you've got some mud in the road and you you're you're heading out to the field and some poor motorcyclist hits the mud on the road that you left in the last run and is heading towards your vehicle. Yeah. Um, what have you done to protect that? that other road user yeah absolutely no that's uh, staying with the spike questions um when using a spike in a front loader is it safe to have the spike pointing inwards uh, towards the tractor um jim will remember me having full and frank discussions with a a, a traffic officer at yeah, one of the- our road shows but the spikes were pointing up, they weren't pointing in the way. Aye, but they were pointing <laughs> up. Yes. Um, I, 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 I asked this, this officer, Wendy, you know, what about, you know, loader up in the air um, and your point, your, the, the, you put your spikes either straight up or straight down, um, you know, taken back away from the forward motion as much as possible. His argument was that the very fact that you were running with the loader up in the air was a danger in itself. Um, you, I'd, I would have um, changed um, the centre of gravity, made the vehicle more unsafe and caused extra blind spots. Um, and it's one of these ones, I don't know there's a right or wrong answer. And Jim, I don't think there's been a, a case yet. No, there hasn't. Um, Health and Safety, everybody's favourite organisation. They even love them more than us. Um, they, their advice is down, because when it's up, it's affecting the centre of gravity. Yeah. Um, you were actually very polite there. You didn't tell them the real reason the policemen said they were a danger when they were up. Um, I thought it was a wee bit silly. <laughs> Go on, tell mean, them. What do you mean a wee bit silly? It was bloody ridiculous. But his reason for it being a danger when the rock was for any parachutists. <laughs> That's what he told us. I kid you not. Um, yes, I. Wow. Well, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, next again, spike related, but we're on to pallet forks now. How would you place pallet forks on Arctic steer, an Arctic steer telehandler whilst travelling on the public road? It would need to be covered. Yeah, covered. The uh, only way you can do it on, on that because yeah. um, if it's an Arctic steer, if you raise the boom, you, you obviously can't see where you're going. Mm-hmm. So you have to make up a set of covers unless you happen to have uh, JCB one where they do fold back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and there was another similar question. Uh, can I carry my fixed pallet forks on my four wheel steer forklift on a public road? If I can, do I need a bumper or cover? So I'm guessing that's the same. Yeah. It's a cover, yeah. 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 Cover. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, right. There's quite, Jim, I don't know if you can read this. Yeah, I'm reading that one. Yeah. Aye. Um, about um, each category, I'll maybe yeah, let you digest yeah. that one. I, don't know. <laughs> um, I, know where he, I know where he's coming from. Okay. Um, some of the, the Challenger tractors, the steering wheel actually operates hydraulic rams, which articulate the vehicle rather than physically break the, the tracks to steer them. Um, and if it's operated by the steering wheel operating hydraulic rams, then category F fits. If not, he needs category H. Yeah. If, and, if, the, if the vehicle is steered by altering the speed of the track, tracks, yeah, rather than, it's category rather, H. Yeah. If, the, if the vehicle has um, 
is steerable either because, and I'm trying to think, um, uh, class, let's say, in combine with tracks on it, it's still steered because the back wheels actually turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The case quad track, it's steered by articulation. Yeah. And each category, um, the category B gives you that as a provisional. I am 99% certain. You'll see, yep. it on the, you'll see it on their license. Um, the categories that you're passed are in uppercase. The provisional entitlements are in lowercase. That's the distinction on the front of licenses. If you if you look at the, the license. And mm -hmm. yes, you would need L plates. And yes, if there is a seat, a spare seat in the tractor, then there has to be a bum in that seat that has held the appropriate license for at least three years. Although, oddly enough, Jim, on that one, um, I'm not sure what would happen during the test. Yeah, that, they, they don't. That's, that's the ludicrous thing about it. If, even if there's a, a seat in a, a buddy seat in a tractor, they don't sit in the tractor seat. They just walk about and watch them at various points. The reason is that there is not a three-point seat belt, and that's the reason that there's an examiner doesn't go in a tractor. <laughs> there's a lap belt, but that doesn't work. <laughs> um, yeah. Goodness. As Jamie right. said at the start, we don't make the legislation, we just tell folk about its intricacies. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger, as they say. Well, oh, the folk uh, try. <laughs> right, a couple of questions about uh, securing loads. Um, how well do si wrapped silage bales stay on trailers? Um, I'm guessing that's meaning should they be strapped um, and what are what about strapping fertiliser bags? So right, to... right. St strapping, the, the, we'll start with the bales. Um, every row of bales needs a ratchet strap up over them, um, preferably onto the chassis, because I see there, I thought there was one someplace coming in about the, the rope hooks, or as Jamie would say, lashing points. Um, <laughs> the they need to be secured, um, especially if, if they're um, wrapped in that plastic because it'll become quite slippy. So, yeah, a ratchet strap up, up over every row of bales, be okay. it wrapped or straw. Fertiliser bags, probably one of the most difficult loads that any driver will try to secure um, because they settle and they can settle very, very quickly. Um, I used to do the uh, dangerous goods inspections for the DVSA, and I was at one that carries a lot of fertiliser, and he, I got asked the same question. Um, and he put two, uh, two fertiliser bags, full fertiliser bags on his lorry, um, ratchet strapped them on, and went 50 yards up his uh, farm road, and stopped and got out, and he was able to take the ratchet straps off without slackening them because they'd settled down so quick. Mm -hmm. There are a number of uh, things that some lorry drivers do. They will lace the top of the bags together and then ratchet strap every row of bags again. The big problem with ratchet straps on fertilizer bags is they rub the fertilizer bag and they burst it and you start spreading the fertiliser along the road, no the field. Um, despite what drivers have heard, rope and sheets are still an acceptable form of load security. So a sheet over the top, an old-fashioned uh, old cover with ropes over the top of that is probably the best method of securing your fertiliser, um, especially if you're going any distance. Okay, um, pickups and trailers, are they all okay for towing three and a half tonnes? Um, no. Nope. So that's the rating on the Yeah, the yeah. It, it depends on the, the pickup. Um, it'll have a, a maximum permitted towing weight. Um, all vehicles have got um, 
vehicle identification plates on them, VIN plates as we call them, and on them they have their permitted maximum gross weights um, that they're allowed. Um, and it doesn't matter where the VIN plate is fixed. Um, they're all over the shop. Land Rovers have got them inside the bonnet. They're black with silver writing. Um, Ford Rangers are stuck on the B pillar on the near side, isn't it, Jamie? I uh, are they're, yep. they're, they're all over the place, but they're all laid out exactly the same when you find them. And from top to bottom, um, the top number is the gross train weight, which is vehicle, trailer and load. The next one down is gross vehicle weight. So that's the vehicle on its own with load. And that includes driver, passengers and a full tank of diesel. And then the next two, sometimes they're numbered one and two is axles one and axle two. Um, so that's where you get your weights. Um, a lot of them are coming in nowadays with a gross train weight of about six tonne. Um, so, and a three and a half tonne on the trailer, eh, on the unit. So you've got two and a half tonne with your trailer, additional kind of thing. But look at the handbook and it'll give you your answer for the the maximum permissible towing weight, if you like. But Jim, if you your um, maximum train weight, um, you could you could lower your vehicle weight and increase your trailer weight. Yes, so I, as your yeah. trailer is allowed. Yes, yes, I. Yeah, it's as far as anything goes with us. It's weighed as seen on the day. Um, so yeah, and that's what a lot of folk do. They they keep the towing vehicle weight lower and put more on the trailer eh, because it's handier depending on the load they're carrying and that. So you just need to play about with it and look at your, be aware of your vehicle. You know how the vehicle handles better than anybody. So just be a, aware yep. of them. So, so your, your towing weight is your second number. So that's the maximum that you can have in a trailer behind you. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you have to be aware that, you know, with some vehicles, it is possible that if your um, vehicle is also fully loaded, you might be exceeding your maximum train weight. Yeah. Okay, uh, we've still got a few questions coming yeah. in, so we'll get through some more. Um, what are your thoughts on the Tilly Your Trailer Scheme? I haven't heard of that one of, of you gents. Um, do you think these yep. should become mandatory, such as MOTs for tractors, the HGV industry? <sighs> needs to get trailers tested. Right, I'm going to take my NFU Scotland hat off. Personally <laughs> speaking, um, I'll Can be you honest. maybe explain what the scheme is first, Jamie? Sorry, the, I had The tell your that. trailer is a system whereby it all came about because of a young lad that was killed down south in an accident and um, the, the, I believe that the, the trailer wasn't um, road legal there were problems with it so the lad's mother has set up this thing um, tell you your trailer um, and it's it's a testing regime um, I still feel that it's not 100% um, but what I would say is I struggle to defend our industry not having some form of testing when you see the types of vehicles that we are running now um, we don't, what I would say is it is still a legal requirement, um, the pure provision and use of workplace equipment regulations, um, all machinery has got to be maintained in accordance with its manufacturer's instructions and the driver must be instructed in its use is the way it is. So, um. I think that it's a good way of, of doing some additional checks. So I would recommend that, you know, if you if you can do it, strongly think in doing it. Yeah, absolutely. It's never a bad idea, is it, to go that extra? You never think it's going to happen to you, but you never yep. know when. The, when, the, when they did the consultation the way back to get the speeds and weights up, they were looking at testing and... Since that consultation, 
they've now given or granted legislation for fast tractors to be used as heavy goods vehicles. And they've got to go, I'm not going to say undergo the same test, but they have to be tested before they can be used. But the big problem is that none of the ATFs have the facilities to do the brake tests in particular on the likes of the JCB fast track. So everything is just looked at. So they've, in a certain aspect, they've watered it down. Um, and that's the big problem. They don't have the we don't have the facilities to do the full brake tests. I certainly know at Perth, if we're doing an HGV check and they bring a tractor and trailer in because the cops in Perth are quite proactive in that, we will not do a brake test on the tractor, but we will most definitely do a brake test on the trailer. And if the brakes don't come up to scratch, it's a prohibition. So if they hear fairy stories about trailers not getting brake tested, it checks. It certainly doesn't ring true in Perth. It may ring true in other areas in the country, but Perth, we must be a nasty lot. Um, but we do brake tests on trailers, so just be aware of it, folks. Okay. Uh, again, related to health and safety, do machinery manufacturers have any responsibility to conform to any regulations or health and safety guidance, or is it all on the user? <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, it's on the user. Yeah. Ultimately, it's on the user because... Um, a lot of these things, if you think in it from the manufacturer's point of view, they're trying to get that thing as cheap as they can because um, it's only if, there is, if they can be competitive, they'll sell it. Um, if you take the example of the bale spikes that I've got, I chose to pay extra um, to, use, to, to get folding ones so I could run on the road. Other people might never be on the road with that. It might be purely on farm. Yeah. But ultimately, it's up to the driver and the operator to make sure that they comply with all of the legislation. Okay, that was something I was going to ask, actually. You know, maybe where does the responsibility lie if there's a problem and somebody's stopped? Is it with the owner of the tractor or the driver of the tractor? Putting my police hat on or my former police hat, both. <laughs> um, the, the, the police do report the driver and then they would report the owner, the farmer, for causing or permitting him to drive with a defective vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, um, two bites of the cherry, if you yep. like. Um, but, uh, and depending on the procurator fiscal, um, certainly going back to the time that I was in the police, and I'm speaking about overloading, um, very, very frequently the fiscal would take no action against the driver because he was more or less told that if he didn't take that van or lorry out, he would get the sack. Yeah. So, you know, there's got to be common sense, but yeah, we would initially we would report both um, and let the fiscal decide what who who they were going to take to court, if anybody. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, next question from David: Is there a limit to how far you can travel between two farms owned by the same person and a tractor using red diesel? No, so long as you are using it for its legitimate use, you can travel to and from. Where there is a distance limit is if you have registered the likes of an old Land Rover or pickup or something as a limited use vehicle. There is a limit of one and a half kilometres between two parcels of land in the same management. Okay. Uh, again, a, a similar question. Is there a problem shifting a 3.4 metre wide digger between farms on a low loader tractor? Uh, what would be required um, to do safely and legally? Right, you would need so you would need to have um, notified the police or have a dispensation notice. You would need to have the vehicle marked. It would the um, loader would need to be secured using probably chains and dwangs. Yep. 
etc., etc. Speed limit of 20. Yeah, because of the width. Because of the width. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can. Yes, you can do it. <laughs> Grand. Okay. Uh, what are the rules with wearing helmets on the public roads and an ATV? Um, this person recalls there was some sort yeah. of different rules between health and There's, safety and DVSA. No, DVSA uh, don't have rules. It's the Road Traffic Act. Right. The road, um, the road Traffic Act says that you do not need to wear a helmet because it's a, a four-wheeled vehicle. Um, however, health and safety legislation insists that you must have full PPE and part of your personal protection equipment is a helmet. So if that if if the if it was a personal bike that wasn't used for the business, you wouldn't need a helmet, but because it's being used for a business purpose, you must have a helmet. Yeah. And let's just say I won't go on a quad without a helmet on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, that's that one. Um, do I need a CPC, a CPC additional to the C license to drive a livestock lorry? Go for it, Jim. No, <laughs> provided he's using it in connection with his agricultural, entrepreneurial activity. But be careful if you are carrying somebody else's livestock then you probably would need the CPC. And there's now this, was it 30% of your monthly working time? Does that come into the farmer's one again? No. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, so. the, the guideline says that um, you don't need the CPC if you're using it for your own agricultural yeah. business. Yeah so long as driving isn't the main part of your occupation. And the way they work that one now is a rolling... Monthly period. Yes, yeah, so a rolling it's, monthly it's period. A rolling 30%. Yeah. 30%. Yeah. Okay. So start working that one out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a tricky one. Um, what age can a child ride in the cab of a tractor with a passenger no, seat? No person under the age of 13 shall be shall drive or be carried in any agricultural vehicle so 13 okay and that's so that covers a load all as well yeah uh, okay so that's those two and our last question at the moment is tire age is there a 10 year tire age limit in existence or looking likely to come <laughs> right it's, it's in existence for HGVs and PSVs. No tyre over 10-year-old will be fitted to a steered axle on any HGV or any bus. And no tyre over 10-year-old will be fitted to a single wheel fitment, any single wheel fitment on a minibus. Um, that is all at the moment. Um, they have not brought it in for any other vehicles as yet. Um, the reason for it coming in was way back in 2013, there was a tyre blowout um, in a bus and the tyre was 19 and a half year old um, when it blew out and the bus went off the road, up an embankment, down the other side and hit a tree and killed three folk. Um, only took them seven years to get the tyre legislation in. Um, for HGVs and buses, so just be aware of that one. Um, and if you do run an HGV, um, just to add on here, be aware that you may get advisory as an annual test if it's a twin wheel fitment and they can't see the date uh, box on the side wall of the tyre. All tyres have got a wee box with four digits in them. Um, could be 19, 20, 18, 18... 52, 18, and what they are, the first two of the week and the second two of the year, the manufacturer. Um, every tyre's got them somewhere on the sidewall. Um, they are trying to get tyre manufacturers to put them on both sides of the tyre so they didn't get the advisories, but that would cost money, um, so that's not coming in yet. Whether they bring it in for any other class of vehicles, 
it's going to be a matter of watch this space. Um, what I would say, you just look at the condition of the tyres, if they're starting to look perished, cracks, things like that, then mm, are they fit for the job? Um, you've got to have serious thoughts about them. Okay, right, we've, we're nearly at nine o'clock, so we'll just take these last two questions, I think, and then get wrapped up. Uh, so if you do temporary work driving an HGV off the farm, do you need a driver CPC? I would say yes, but again, it comes back to it depends on the type of work that they're doing. There is an exemption from CPC requirements if they're carrying tools, machinery or equipment that they're going to use. Um, and the driving makes up no more than 30% of their role in monthly working time. However, if they're driving an HGV as general haulage, then yes, they need the driver CPC. You need it for the second job, not for yes, the, aye, the farm bit. Job. Yeah, aye, it's the second yeah. job, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically if you're being paid to drive a lorry off farm, you yeah, need your yeah, CPC. Yeah, CPC, yeah. Unless, okay. of course, you happen um, to be driving on another farm. <laughs> Because then it would be allowed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's Perry complicated. Mason isn't strikes it? again. Oh yes, the legislation <laughs> is wonderful. Okay. Um, right. So our last one: Where does the law stand if you are blocked from entering your field with your tractor and load because a car or vehicle has been abandoned or parked, but the driver is not to be seen? Well, the one thing you don't do is go and get the fort list and move it. <laughs> Right. No matter how tempting, tempting it is. It is. Um, go, go back to my former days. If you can't get in, tough, different if you can't get out. And that's the, if you if your driveway is blocked that you can't drive into your driveway, there's nothing the police can do. But if you're in the driveway and need now and they've blocked it, then we can see lift the car. And I would imagine it will be exactly the same for folk getting into the field. You can, but I agree I, it's frustrating and totally wrong. Um, again, I'll jump in there. That one is being looked at to see if, if anything can be done um, because it is very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. If the police have the time, that's the first thing I would do is phone the police. Oh, yeah. Because if they have the time, they will come out. But they are so overworked, it's unbelievable. Um, but there are, it's old story, there are quite often other things that they can do. But that, um, it's really frustrating and it is being looked at to see because it's all part of the um, visitor management um, which is because of the access legislation um, for walkers, because an awful lot of these people, um, whether because of, um, I think it's just lack of thought. Um, a lot of these people, when they come out the countryside, they suddenly become overall hard of thinking. And there's a bit to part for us to go and walk, walk the dog or whatever. And it's absolutely fine because... There's not a driveway there. It's just a farmer's gateway, and they never use them, do they? So um, it is being looked at, but please, people, do not go and get the forklift and haul it out of the way because <laughs> uh, it, it is very tempting, but um, the chances are it's going to be you that ends up in court, not, not the car driver. Yeah, yeah. Um, just very quickly, I've noticed one last we know in the chat. Um, are hooks welded onto trailer crossbars acceptable points to secure ratchet straps or should they be located to the main chassis? I think you maybe covered it earlier, but just, just yeah, to clarify. Ratchet straps onto the main chassis is the best. Any welding, it can't be weight tested. Don't you jump in here. <laughs> there is a certain trailer manufacturer that has done a scientific test. Um, but yeah, yeah, that um, was interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, the problem is any weld, and that's that's how we kind of get a load rating onto rope hooks because the, there's no way of testing them, um, you know, to give us a load rating on them, and that's all down to you know load security. Is it can it move forwards, backwards, or whatever? It is very, very difficult to 
say, get them onto the chassis if you can. If you can, but yeah. I will say, Jim, that in an awful lot of cases, it is very difficult. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I can see fully where that, that's come from because I always say that a lot of the old um, rope hooks were designed just for that. They yeah. were designed for ropes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've, seen, I've, I've got heavier welding wire than a lot of those rope hooks were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The trailers now, the 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 lashing points, and I am trying to start saying that lashing points are an awful lot stronger, and I think they would pass a test. But at the moment, um, it's another of these grey areas, and I am working with um, DVSA, Police Scotland, and some of the trailer manufacturers to see if we can kind of you know sort it out going forward. Eight. Good, right. I think that's there is one last point um, here, and it's something I was going to come on to just in finishing up. Um, you know, it's been two fantastic presentations from our speakers who are extremely knowledgeable and they've covered, um, you know, lots of different topics and given lots of practical advice. And I'm really glad there was lots of questions. That's what I hope that people felt it was an informal way to ask all the things you've been dying to know um, but you were too scared to ask. That was really the whole aim of the game. Um, we are, somebody was asking if we could send out the slides. Um, as part, as a follow-on from this, we are going to be making a publication with sort of the the headline points um, from tonight and we'll maybe put in some of the examples that people have asked in questions as well. Uh, so we'll produce that um, before, the, before Christmas uh, and Jamie and Jim will hopefully have a look at look over that as well and we'll make sure that we're getting stuff out there so it'll be available on the FAS website and we'll make sure it gets emailed to everybody who who was in attendance tonight. Um, I think that's just a couple of folks saying thank you very much to you both. Yeah, that's, that. it's, been, yeah. it's been really good um, and I think we're, we're now at five past nine so I think we've, we've done not too bad with the timekeeping considering the number of questions there was for you <laughs> to get through. So um, with that I've just uh, yeah, like to thank everybody for, for joining and oh you will all very quickly you will get a, a survey route emailed round to you tomorrow as well just to give your feedback on on the meeting um, if you could take five minutes to fill that in you'll be entered into a prize draw to, to in, um, win some vouchers for damn delicious uh, in Lanarkshire to get you could get some meat, a meat hamper for Christmas or there's another hamper company as well uh, so it's, it's well worth a uh, taking the five minutes to fill it in and the feedback's really useful for us as well okay right thank you very much uh, and we'll just we'll close the meeting now thank you okay. thank you everyone okay thank Cheers. you bye everybody bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.